QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Customer Center. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the home page open. You can open the home page by going to the company drop down, selecting home page. We also have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, selecting the open windows list. And note whether this is going to be collapsed or not so that you can see or not see the home page. We will be, or the open windows, we will be collapsing it shortly. Down here, last time, we took a look at the customer section of the flowchart, focusing in on the flow of, you can call it the customer cycle, the, the accounts receivable cycle, the sales cycle, the revenue cycle, that, that all different names for basically the same thing. The customers then are the people, of course, that are going to eventually be paying us. Those are, are going to be our clients, our customers. And we want to also be tracking this information, not just by the flow. When we think about these items, we typically are looking at basically the journal entry, but also by who owes us the money in particular, if we need to be tracking that information for the accounts receivable, if we are on, in other words, an accrual type basis method where we are billing people as we, after we do the work and we haven't yet received the money yet. If we're tracking that receivable, then it's going to be really important for us to, you know, be tracking who owes us the money so that we can uh, collect on that money. So we can get to the customer center. One way we can do that and focus in on the customers here by clicking this section on the homepage or, and I like to do this more often is going to the, the uh, customer dropdown and going to the customer center up top. The reason I like this more is because that option is there no matter what, even if you're not on the homepage. So you do not have to go to the homepage in order to open the customer center uh, you just go to the drop down up top. So let's go on over to the customer center. It's going to look a lot like the vendor center, except these are the customers now. I'm going to close the open windows now. So I'm going to collapse the open windows so we have a li little bit more space to be working with. So notice the customers will be on the left hand side. Again, the customers are the two major types of, of people we put into the system are going to be customers, people that pay us, vendors, people that we pay, and then we have employees as well who are you know, employees. So these are going to be the people that are paying us. We basically label them as uh, customers. They're going to be in the sales cycle, sales process. To add a new customer, you'd hit the drop down up top and we can have new customer. You also have jobs. We'll take a look at, at jobs that might be a, a pr that would be applicable if you have a job cost system, which may be the case if you're a bookkeeper and whatnot, or if you're an accounting firm or a law firm or like in a construction company. We'll take a little look at the, the jobs later, but uh, we do have a course on, on a job cost system that focus more in on jobs themselves. You'll note that we do have a couple jobs. These are these are jobs here that are linked to a particular customer. So this gives us nice a nice little rundown of um, who, how much is owed to us. So if we go on any of these items, let's go to Anderson. We have the transactions on the right hand side. So the typical transactions for a customer will be invoices. We will invoice the client and then hopefully payments because they will pay us once invoiced. We may also have the sales receipts, but we also have some nice information for the customers because unlike the vendors, if you talk about the vendor side of things, if you talk about like the phone company, or the utilities company, we really only want their, their contact information and know how to pay them is all we really need. Unless you're talking about those vendors that we, that we have a relationship with, such as our major vendors that we purchase from, in our case, the vendors that sell us guitars, then we might have a lot more detail on those particular vendors. On the customer side of things, we at least would want to, in most companies, attempt to have a lot more communication with the customers, make sure that we're building a relationship with the customer, sending out our newsletter and all that kind of thing. So we have the transactions tab over here. We also have the contacts information that we might have more detailed information, the uh, to do's items, notes, we could put notes here and any kind of notes that we want. Like if we're going to be contacting the individual, we might want some little notes on the last contact or, you know, something like that. And then we have the uh, sent email items. So in other words, also note, if you were to create a new customer, you could do so, as we said, by going to new dropdown, I'll create one, but I won't finalize it. And then you can go into the new customer and you'll see similar data input type of information. Uh, all you really need for the transactions is going to be the customer name, but obviously all this other information for the phone number and, and whatnot and contact information, shipping information, if necessary, uh, would be applicable. We got payment type of information sales tax we talked about in the sales tax widget 
that could be applicable, but usually it's there by default, meaning they're going to be typically taxable uh, depending on the item that we're selling. Additional information and then job info. So I'm going to be closing this back out. Now you can create a customer here, obviously, and you can also create a customer as you create the forms that are typically used for customers. That being an invoice form, a sales receipt, the common two types of forms when you might be entering or adding customers as you go. Now, once we make transactions to the customers, then of course, we're going to be wanting to track the receivables. Now, if you're in an industry that makes sales at a point in time or the sales happen at the same point that you receive payment, like a restaurant or something like that, then you may not have the receivables. However, if you do the work first, have to bill the client and accept, expect to be paid in the future, you can track the receivables and they give you a quick kind of rundown of the receivables here. Uh, and so you can and you could search on them in detail, of course, by going into the customer information. So if you have a question about a particular customer's uh, balance, you can go here. You can also run reports that will be sub ledgers to the accounts receivable report that we'll see in future presentations to do a similar type of task and, and see how much is owed uh, to you so that you can go through the collection process. Obviously, for large companies, the collection process accounts receivable and collecting can be a large job in and of itself a department basically you know in and of itself we also have this second tab up top now the second tab as we saw with the vendor section is going to break this stuff out not by customer but rather by the typical forms that will be included in the sales cycle the customer cycle the revenue cycle whatever you want to call it so we have the invoices you can then click on the invoices if you want to find a particular invoice and then you could sort the invoices, have all invoices or just the open invoices. So if you want to see all invoices, here they are. If you want to see the open invoices, these are the ones that are uh, open. And then we have the uh, overdue invoices. So I'm going to go to open here. And so then you have the other information. Again, these will look familiar because if I go back to opening this, if I go back to the home page, they're listing it by basically kind of like the major forms that would be involved in uh, the customer cycle or the sales cycle. So then this is a way that we can go into those, those forms basically or search for the forms directly. So we've had the, the sales receipts, we have the, and notice the data is in 2021. So right now I'm in 2020. So I'd have to change in, in this case, the next uh, fiscal year. And then you could see, you know, the data, if there's any data related to these items. And then the receive payments, same thing. I'm gonna go to uh next fiscal year so we could see the receive payment items credit memos and uh the refunds so again sorting these out this could be a nice place to go in order to uh to to go directly to a particular uh form it's another way you can get there so if you know the customer obviously you can go directly to the customer and then to the invoice or form or if you're looking up a form and you for whatever reason you don't know the customer then you can search it by form type and use your filters on uh, this side